Good morning. Today is the 11th of July and we're here at the British Motor Museum in Gaydon in Warwickshire. Now last year we did a slightly shambolic shuffle around the main part of the museum over there and because we're at the BMC Leyland show for 2021 um, we're back and uh, because I missed out on this entire building during the last shambolic shuffle I think it's time to uh, remedy that and uh, yeah, get filming in here because I guess I want to do interesting things inside. Right, here we go. So I've started in the Jaguar Heritage Trust collection. Jaguar actually started off, there is uh, Sir William Lyons and his lady wife. Jaguar actually started off as a company called um, Swallow Sidecars. And here's a Bruff Superior SS80 motorcycle 925 with a 28 Swallow Model 4 Super Sport sidecar. That's how we started off with a Blackpool, I think, their first buzz. Ah, oh, 77 RW. This is a very early Jaguar E Type, the first production open two seater E Type, flat floor model. Very, very famous car. Very, very beautiful. Much later E-Type here. V12 Series 3. It's on a J plate, so probably about 1970. Yep, 1970. Series 3 V12 Plus 2, Jaguar Prescott. HP plate, so from this area. And here's the final E-Type they ever built, 74. E Type Series 3 V12. Yeah, 12th of June 74. It's interesting that I'm not going to touch your upholstery, but it's not a leather interior, it's actually sort of like a, an artificial one. Next. 1948 Jaguar 3.5 litre saloon. Arthur's Mark IV, interesting. Built for Arthur Whitaker, Jaguar director and general manager. VC, of course, Coventry plate. Browns Lane is probably built at. I've been to Browns Lane, actually. Um, a, lot, a lot of it is actually not Jaguar site anymore, although they do, I think, they have a little presence there still. Much later, Jaguar saloon. I always get confused on the ones that the before the Mark II came out. It's a Mark 7M from 1955, owned by the Queen Mother until 1973. 1973, Jaguar XJ12 Series 1 Vanden Saloon, which uh, was the Queen Mother's after this one. I'm saying Vanden because from publicity material I know from the 1980s, that's the way that actually they used to pronounce it. There are other ways of doing it, of course, and other ways are correct, but I say Van den Pla because that's always the way I've done it. So 1973, Denver 66 Van den Pla, uh, Series 2. It's personal transport for Sir William and Lyons and Lord Stokes. It's a long wheelbase version. Twin fuel tanks, of course, so because not a lot of um, fuel economy. 1977-78 Jaguar XJ 5.3C. It's kind of similar to the one used in the New Avengers, but that one, that one was modified by a company called Broadspeed. So this is a very late one here. Yeah, 78, last production, XJ 6 Series 2 Coupe or XJ. 1987, Jaguar Sovereign Series 3, 4.2 litre, last 4.2 Series 3 XJ6 built. I think by this time that the, the XJ40 had come out, so yeah, the Series 3 was very heavily based on the Series 1 and 2, it's just uh, they a different glass house. Now the, the V12 version of this was built much later, like until 1992. So PHP 42G, another very important car. 
Sir William Lyon's personal car from 1968. It's a very early XJ6. We have last production XJ6 from 1996. Six litre V12 coupe. Quite a few differences between this and uh, you know the early ones. Driver's airbag on this one as well. Let's go around the front of go around the front actually to have a look at the one screen label on this. 1996 XJS 4 litre convertible, last production XJS 4 litre convertible. 1990 Jaguar XJS Twin Turbo with Ferguson four wheel drive. Oh, yes, please. And is that a beige leather interior I see before me? Oh, yes, please. I do like a nice beige leather interior. And it's got a manual gearbox in it, too. Fascinating. Don't knock the wing mirrors, be very careful. Here is Princess Diana's 1987 Jaguar XJS V12 Cabrio on an E-plate. Not registered at my Jaguar themselves because that's, Lon that's a London registration number actually. What is this? 1963 Daimler SP252. So it's a variation of the Daimler Dart but not really because this is supposed to replace it, but it never happened. Yes. Yes. Wow. Never seen. Yes. Never seen so that before. It was also about a 1967 58 plate. Weird. So here is a Damon SP250 or the Dart. I don't think they're allowed to use the Dart name somehow. Yeah, this is the earliest one surviving from 59. This looks like an XJ120. Oof, that's interesting illustration. The bronze Jaguar has been masked up. 1953, Jaguar XK120, the last Right hand drive XK120 belt, or rather last existing one. 54 XK140 open two seater. Harpature plate, I think, on that. It's a very early one. Ooh. A lovely, lovely base interior. an XK150. Yep, I was right. XK150. 1958. 3.4 litre drop head coupe. Special order in pure white with wire wheels. Now, fans of uh, a certain Mr. Ian Seabrook's channel will recognise this. Jaguar S Type 3.4. Saloon. Now the S-Type was based on a Mark II with independent rear suspension and different styling. I believe this one is the automatic. See it is. There we go. Now the S-Type didn't actually sell as well as they expected, so they did sort of facelift it later, and they called it the Jaguar 420. If one of those is here, we'll have to see. Jaguar Mark 1, 3.4 automatic from 1958 TOX1 1967 Jaguar Mark 2, 3.8 litre one of the last 3.8 manual cars to be built in 1967 they stopped production of the Mark 2 and Brought out into a couple of different variants called the 240 and 340, which didn't have this engine. 
that they were a bit cheaper to build. They had different bumpers and things just to tie them over till they got to the um, um, XJ6 later in 1968. 1966 Daimler V8 250. Yeah, Baterna designed 2.5 litre V8 engine. That's what says 1965, registration. Maybe it was built in 65 and 66. Got some more modern Jaguars here. 2014 XKR. Don't know what that is. Oh, the last production Jaguar XK as well. 2005 Jaguar ALC Coupe. It's like a prototype for the uh, XK. Last production Jaguar XK8 Coupe. The first generation. Austin Powers. Replica of car from Gold Member in 2001. Jaguar X-Type, four-wheel drive for a litre V6 estate. I did do a, a, um, an X-Type on the channel a long time ago. <laughs> um, I think March 2020, I reviewed an X-Type. Yeah, supercharged as well. 2001, Jaguar X-Type, 2.5 litre sports saloon. First production that X type, not a four wheel drive, I think. 2007, Jaguar XFS uh, SV8, although it's got an O8 plate on it. Who knows? Mm -hmm. 2015, Jaguar XF 2.2 forbidden fuel R Sport. We don't talk about these on the channel, of course. The uh, last production first generation XF. And this is a 2007 S Type R Saloon, the last production of this, of this generation of S Type because, of course, that XF down there replaced it. Nineteen ninety seven Jaguar X36 three point two Sport. Last Jaguar built using the AJ16 six cylinder engine. We do have a review of uh, Jaguar using the four litre version of this engine on, no, on uh, sensible second hand classics on the channel, actually. It's not as nice condition as this, of course, but uh, it's there. 2007. It's dark green with a beige leather interior. So, what's this absolute beauty? 1997 Jaguar XJ12 Saloon, the last V12 engine car built by Jaguar. 2005 Jaguar Super V8 Portfolio Saloon, the last production car built at Brands Lane. 2019 Jaguar XJ 3 litre V6 Forbidden Fuel, the last right hand drive XJ off the line. Sad. 1995 Daimler 6 double stretched limousine. How long is this then? Oh, it's very long. Very long indeed. I was attached to Daimler because of the little fluted plinths. Another Daimler here. And a short day, uh, and shortened sort of XJ Coupe thing. What is this? Then? 1994 Jaguar XJ 40 V12 Coupe concept. Built right at the end of production. Daimler Corsica convertible, one of concept commemorating Daimler Centenary. Hmm. Lots of nice wood and a green steering wheel. Always would have sold well. What's up with the bonnet? It's a clear bonnet. 1992 Jaguar XJ40 shooting brake with a clear bonnet showing all these bits and pieces in it. 
four litre straight six. One off coupe prototype. That, that, that looks quite nice, actually. I like that. Prototype. XJ without paint on it, showing the aluminium structure, I think. Yeah, XJ8 Polish Saloon. CXS Concept from 2007. 2001 Jaguar RQ Pay Concept. 2003 RD6 Concept. Ooh, Jaguar XJ220 concept car from 1988. Yes, this one was the one that had the V12 engine in it and four-wheel drive, which never actually made it to production because it all got expensive and all went wrong. Very nice, eh? Oh, of course, it's this. 1988 Jaguar XJ42 prototype, a convertible version of what was going to be the XJS replacement. Eventually that sort of became the, uh, um, the XK. Another concept here. 2000 Jaguar F-Type concept car. A bit different than the F-Type that came out, I think 2013 that came out. Right, next floor. Here on the upper floor. BMC ECV3 prototype car from I think it was 82 this came. This came out, never went into production of course. A few kind of metro bits in there. Yep, it was 80, 80, 81, sorry. EC3 into the convention vehicle. Last Triumph TR7 production line from 1981. Producing Sully Hole. Very late MGB, but might be one of the last ones actually. It's running a 1980 plate, so might well be. Very late Atal, it's at 1.7 SLX, top of the range. 1983, so last of the line is Tal Estate car. 1983 Land Rover Series 3 Lightweight. Is that a Triumph Acclaim I see there? 1989 ERA Mini Turbo. Metro 9X6 cylinder prototype. Austin i6 Project 90. Final Triumph Acclaim. No plate on it. Don't touch. That won't be. It's automatic. Six cylinder metro. There we go, claim C D eighty four. There's that concept car. It looks kind of similar to that E C three, doesn't it? That must be the last uh, series three Land Rover. It's an eighty five plate on that. Yeah, obviously the last series three. I don't know what this mini is. Hmm. It's suspicious but it's wheels. Maybe that's a, that's the case series prototype for them. And of course the Rover CCV, which later sort of morphed into uh, the uh, Andrew Coupe. Yes, I was right. I'd be, only thing I was wrong about was that. That J Land Rover is an 86, not an 85, but it's the last one on the line. MG DR2 prototype. I suppose a bit like a TF, but a little bit bigger actually. Land Rover 90, 90 Amphibious, Triumph 1300. Let's have a look at those. Triumph 1300 and Metro 6R4 development rally car from. 1983, Triumph 1300. This is a G Wack discovery. Oh no, it's even before that. It's even before the press cars, which were a G something something WAC. This is a sort of like a prototype for 
the discoveries. See, that's early 89. Tracked. Land Rover from about 1995. This crazy metro thing. Express 24 hour delivery. Oh, you certainly get to where you wanted to go quickly in that. This looks a bit like Dr. Muro's Land Rover. Aha. Yes, please. It's a final Montego. I'll have a look at a second. This looks like the final. Rover ST1. 1996 Rover ST1 Vitesse. Yes, deep plate, so a very late one. Just give me one second, viewers. Yeah, this is the final Montego. Two litre forbidden fuel Perkins Prima engine signed by everyone who worked on it. There we go. Yeah, don't forget if it's ever actually been on the road, this car. Crazy. Another really early discovery. It's a full Camel Trophy livery as well. All oh, right, yes. The last Allegro. 1982. What an X plate. Probably then Cheddar for Blush of the Maestro or something. This uh, soft dash Range Rover Classic was owned by the Royal Family. KV Coventry plate. Oh, this is a funny looking Land Rover. Funny interior as well. This must be a Virgo C. I thought it was an LSC, but maybe it's a prototype. And here's a very uh, Lotus Elise. Yes. Land Rover lightweight concept vehicle, what would be there? The last Rover 114, the last, well, Metro effectively. Can some everybody worked on it? First ever Land Rover Freelander. Again with signatures all over it. It's an awful lot of awful lot of stuff here to see. P38 Range Rover, a very early one. A very early L322 Range Rover. Yeah, it's supposed to be the last, the first one, the first L322. It's a 51 plate, so it must be. This is the um, last Rover 75 as well, yes. Yeah, 2005 Rover 75 Connoisseur. It's the last one made. That is very sad. Two thousand and one Mini Cooper. Last classic Mini as well behind it. Reliant Scimitar, 1989. Oh, this is the one I was looking for. This is the Mini, the Minky, the K-Series prototype from 1995. Right, let's have a look at some old stuff now. Like, for example, the last Mini to leave Longbridge, 1976 Mini 1275 GT that was used for general shunting around 
and got stuck in the tunnels below Longbridge and I think they pulled it out in 2012. There's not much of it left really, it's a bit damp down there. Just a mini section car and also in 58 MGA twin cam. It's all been sectioned up too. 1955 Daimler Regency Sportsman Saloon. It's when Daimler was uh, owned by BSA and not Jaguar. Right, I think we're going to have to go back a bit now and skip over some of the stuff in here, otherwise, I'm, I'm never going to finish in here. So behind this uh, Triumph Stag, which be quite a late one, it's on a V plate. It's 77, not registered though at all, 79 too many. Portuguese built Mini Moke from 84. 1983 MG Metro aluminium body prototype. This bizarre mini thing. Interesting. Triumph Broadside Concept. Nineteen seventy nine to eighty Honda Prelude. This might well be the last Maxi, that's a uh, Maxi two on an axe. Might well be the last one. That's right, eighty one Austin Maxi seventeen fifty HL, last of the line. MGB Safety Systems Vehicle One, nineteen seventy two. Only Proscope thing. Metro Saloon prototype from 1979, or Mini Metro as it's called then. And this is an LC10 prototype that sort of became the Maestro from 78. I think I prefer the design of the Maestro to be honest, I don't like that so much. Queens. 71, 72, Rover P5B. Triumph 2500S, I think this is maybe the last one that they made, actually. Again, this uh, sort of V-plate. Lovely colour, beige interior, of course. And a fine-looking Land Rover. No information about that. Oh, the gear this many. Yeah, 1976 Mini Gearless Prototype. Another of Alec Sagonis' Flight to Fancy. Triumph SD2 that was supposed to replace the Dolomite from 1975. Here is uh, 1974 Austin 1300S RB5. Take research prototype. Vanden Pla Princess 2200 Prototype. Then we're going to Build this version of the uh, well, they just became the princess. Yeah, rather than the Van der Pla princess, it's the princess. Morris Marina safety vehicle. I don't know if those bumpers really improve the look of it, to be honest. So, jury's out about that. 78. Sectioned up Allegro. Another Rover P5B. Safety Research Mini with, you know, things like flush door handles. And the sort of seam that goes across there is not there. And the front end has been changed. Lovely Dolomite Sprint. <laughs> Second one I've seen today. Probably see more of those. Last of the line, 1980. On W. That's a shame. This is the Triumph Dolomite Michelotti Rebody from 72. I thought it was going to replace the look of it, but it didn't in the end. It didn't have any money. Margaret Thatcher's car. 71. Morris 1800 Mark II. Good old Ace. Overhead camshaft, Ace series. The S-Series engine. Much better than the old R-Series engine. Right. I think, probably, 
we'll just see a couple of more things in here and then we will stop because I'm running out of battery now and running out of memory. And there's a lot more stuff to film at the BMC Leyland show today, so maybe we'll come back another time and we'll, we'll, we'll do some more of this stuff. But I can't leave without showing you the first ever Maestro from 1983. And this 66 Rover P6 Radford prototype called Gladys. Well, thank you ever so much indeed for watching this slightly shambolic shuffle around the Collection Centre at British Motor Museum. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more bits of the BMC Leyland show here at the British Motor Museum in Gaden. Please don't forget to turn notifications on to be informed of new uploads. And the social media links are down below. Thank you ever so much indeed for watching.